Hello everyone, in this video we will deal with some significant concepts in thermodynamic, namely the thermodynamic system, boundary and surrounding. They play important roles because once you want to solve the problems about thermodynamic, then you should at first make sure which boundary you will draw and which system is enclosed in this boundary. And choosing an appropriate system, we can analyze problems more effectively. Okay, so now, what is system, what is boundary, and how is surrounding defined? So let's talk about system at first. Sorry. Paint black, white, system. And we define system as a quantity of matter, quantity of matter, or region of space. And we choose to study its properties of state, region of space. And outside the system, we call it surrounding. Outside the system. And the boundary, of course, is the surface which encloses the system and separates it from its surrounding. So, boundary is the surface. The system. Okay, so now there are some points which must be underlined. I wrote here. First, boundary can be chosen arbitrarily, so it also means the boundary may be real or imaginary. Or imaginary. Okay. So for example, I have a bottle filled with air with two bar here, and the pressure outside the bottle is only one bar. And if now I open the valve here, I open it, so there is no valve now. And air in the bottle will flow out of bottle because of pressure differences. And this process will come to end if the pressure inside the bottle is also one bar. Here, I assume that the outside pressure does not change, so equals one bar. So in this example, how can we draw our boundary? And since our boundary can be chosen arbitrarily, there are unlimited possibilities. So, one possibility is I can choose my border enclosing the inside space of this bottle. And in this case, mass of air in will decrease since air flow out of bottle. And another possibility is that the border encloses the bottle and air outside this bottle like this. Two possibilities. And we could not say which boundary is chosen correctly, but could only guess if it is suitable for us to analyze the process. And the second is, boundary may be fixed or movable. Still use this example for the first possibility mentioned above. The boundary looked at like this. And the boundary is fixed in this case, only surrounds inside space of bottle. But let's think about another case. We choose the border which enclosed the whole air in bottle before we open the valve. So at the beginning, the boundary looks like this, right? 
And after opening the valve, we will get another form of boundary at the, uh, since air flows out of bottle. So it may be looks like this, right? And we see the border moves in this case. So it's movable, sorry. And by the way, in this case, we just consider the initial and final state in this case. And if you cannot understand why, don't be nervous. And after we learn the first law of thermodynamics, you can understand it. Okay, so now let's talk about system. I wrote down some important system for us to deal with thermodynamic problems, and I will talk about it one by one. First, is open system and closed system. And whether a system is an open system or a closed system depends only on whether mass can cross its boundary. Mass can cross boundary. So, if there is no mass flow into or out of our system, it is called closed system. For example, I have a ball here and draw the boundary which encloses the whole air inside this ball. And this system is called the closed system because there is no mass change. So, here is closed system. And otherwise, it is considered to be an open system. Look like this. Look like this. The air flows out of bottle. Therefore, mass inside this boundary will decrease. And pay attention, for both closed and open system, energies are allowed cross the boundary. And here energies include heat and work. Okay, next, adiabatic system. And we consider a system as an adiabatic system if the system is thermally insulated from its surrounding. Pay attention here, thermally. That means there is no heat exchange. But mass exchange and work exchange are allowed. And work exchange allowed. Okay. And next, if neither mass nor energy crosses the boundary, we define this system as an isolated system. So here, no mass and no energy cross the boundary. Okay. And now the last two are homogeneous system and the heterogeneous system. If inside the system all physical properties are uniform, and we say this system has only one single phase, one single phase, and thus it is called homogeneous system. And if a system consists more than one phase, thus we call it heterogeneous system. And I give you now an obvious example here. Um, 
if the temperature is 0 degree centigrade and we assume standard atmospheric pressure here 1 bar about and we all know that ice will melt and in this case in this case we will get ice with water at the same time and because ice and water have different structures and of course different physical properties we have two phases here and this system is heterogeneous system and after some hours for example the whole ice turns into water and we get homogeneous system again so in this case is homogeneous system